so happy. I'm really so happy. You played re a record here, the first player ever to win with three different clubs, the European Champions League. What does that mean to you? This was seed off right after he made the record of winning the Champions League with three different clubs. In 2003, AC Milan defeated Juventus on penalties to win their sixth European Cup, and it was also the night that Zidov sealed his name in the history books as the first player to win the competition with three different clubs. Now, we all know this is something not so easy to accomplish. I mean, Ronaldo tried to do this several, several times and he still hasn't done it. And the best part to this, Zidov achieved this feat before he was 30. This is the story of Clarence Zidov, the man who won the Champions League with three different teams. Seedorf and his parents were immigrants from Suriname who came to Amsterdam in 1979. He was seen as a complete player with both physical and technical skills at such a young age. He started his career at Ajax, making his debut at 16 years of age, a year just after Ajax won the UEFA Cup. This made him the youngest player to make his professional debut for Ajax. Now note that Clarence Seedorf was initially a ball boy, but at Ajax, you're always given the opportunity to make a name for yourself. Even from when he was young, it was as if he already knew he was going places. I have idol, but I don't want to uh, play like somebody or something because I'm Clarence and uh, nothing gonna change it. Can you believe that a 70 year old speaking? This just shows is a man of principles, which we're going to speak about later in this video. It simply shows she doesn't idolize anyone, but instead idolizes his principles. Seedorf was a player who could play every position on the pitch. In 1995, Ajax reached the Champions League final where they met AC Milan. Seedorf played as a midfielder as Ajax went on to beat Milan and this would mark the first of four Champions League trophies that Seedorf would go on to win. As a youngster playing in the Champions League, it was almost like a dream come true for him and to win the competition at such a young age, just extraordinary. That 1995 Ajax team contained a group of confident young boys who had what they used to call the Amsterdam Arrogance. It was a wonderful year for the team as they won both the Champions League and the Championship that year. Aged only 19, Seedorf would move to Sampdoria to experience a more physical game in the Serie A. There was more direct football in Italy, but Seedorf would adapt and show his understanding of the game. Sampdoria was the club that really shaped Seedorf into the man he became. A day Seedorf would never forget was the final day of the 1996 season. He had put on a show of a performance, outstanding display from Seedorf that day. And as the match finished, the newly appointed Real Madrid manager, Fabio Capello, called him and asked, do you want to go with me to Real Madrid? To which he replied, just wait a second, I'm going to get my bag. <laughs> From uh, away from me and from Canberra, we were just leaving together. Uh, and he called us both and he said, come, come, Do you want to go with me to Real Madrid? And I looked around and I said, Are you talking with me? <laughs> I said, Wait a second, I'm just going to get my bag. <laughs> and this marked the next chapter of Clarence Sidoff. He signed for Real Madrid, becoming a midfielder of the Capello system. Sidov is a player who understands the game really well and has brilliant decision making. Most people looked at him and saw a powerhouse who was very disciplined, but one of his most underrated skills is his technical ability. A season passed, Capello left your Pinecast game, but it was the same brilliant Sidov dominating midfields. That year, Real Madrid weren't so great in the league, but in the Champions League, boy oh boy, they were unstoppable. Madrid met Juventus in the final, and the venue for the final was where it all began for Sidov, Amsterdam. It was a tough, tough final until Pridrag Miatovic's goal set to the tie as Real Madrid went on to lift the trophy for the first time in 33 years, a second for Clarence Sidov. It was here Sidov would realize how difficult it was to win the Champions League. Winning it at Ajax was normal to everyone there, so winning the Champions League was just another cup. But at Real Madrid, Sidov saw the recognition the cup had and how special winning the trophy really is. Getting into the final is the most important thing, and then you you will work in the team with the most uh, who has more luck will win the game. This marked another milestone for Sidov: two Champions League in a four-year career. Outstanding. Real Madrid was a special time in Sidov's career, but he and the president at the time clashed over some principal issues. And as a man of his principles, he had to leave the club. 
Inter Milan came calling and in 1999, he joined Inter for a fee of $24 million. Inter coach at the time, Marcelo Lippi, was a big reason Seedorf made the move. But the following year, Lippi was dismissed and Seedorf was confined to the bench under the management of Hector Cooper. It wasn't so much of a nice experience for Seedorf, but we all learn from our bad experiences, don't we? He became a team player at Inter Milan, always urging his team on even though he wasn't getting a lot of playing time. But at the end, he couldn't take it anymore and he needed a new challenge. And then, he did the unthinkable. He moved from Inter to Beta Rivals AC Milan in 2002. Well, this was possible because of the kind of cool-headed player he is. He never talked bad about rivals or other teams in general. He left Inter in good terms and joined AC Milan with a warm welcome. I mean, they didn't know the quality of player they were getting. He could play any position on the pitch, well, except the goalkeeper. At Milan under Carlo Ancelotti, Seedorf played in the center of the midfield as Milan aimed to get to the top again. A year later and boom, they were in the Champions League final. A player with such experience in the Champions League, winning it with Ajax and Madrid, was about to make history. Milan won on penalties against Juventus with Andrei Shevchenko scoring the winning penalty. For Clarence Seedorf, he became the first man ever to win the Champions League with three different teams. I always say for anybody, you know, what is your greatest joy that you've lived in your life? And then try to uh, multiply it by 10. Because sport has that element of emotion that you in normal life won't get. And that's why the fans are so crazy about football. Three finals with three different teams with the same winning outcome. He made this trip simply remarkable. He played in really good teams throughout his career because he was a really good player who managers recognized. His success in his career is a testament of his intelligence and his attitude. While he had a lot of highs in his club career, he did have some lows. I mean, who doesn't? He had a very glittering club career but on the international scene, he wasn't quite as successful. He gained 87 caps for Holland, but there was always a sense of unfulfillment, like he could have done more, he could have accomplished more in his international career. It was almost like unfinished business. But Seedorf didn't actually do something wrong. It all comes down to the connection with the coach, Marco van Basten, who ignored Seedorf from the 2006 World Cup squad. He probably wanted a different sort of player. Seedorf missed two World Cups and a European Cup because of this, and it was a bit out of Seedorf's control. He was a player playing for AC Milan week in, week out, but he still wasn't chosen. There was a period of time where Seedorf didn't play for the Netherlands for six years. But his club career was an absolute success. In 2005, Milan made it to another Champions League final. This time, it was against Liverpool. If I was a betting man, I'd bet that Seedorf would go on to win the Champions League that year. I mean, who wouldn't? A Milan team that had the likes of Maldini, Gattuso, Kaka, Perlo, come on. They seemed unstoppable. And at least for the first half, they were unstoppable as they led Liverpool 3-0. But the second half was a totally different story, as Liverpool would go on to score three goals in six minutes, leveling the score. It was on to penalties again, and as destiny would have it, the same player who took Milan's winning penalty back then against Juventus was the same man to take the deciding penalty this time. But unfortunately, he missed, and Liverpool's comeback was complete. But revenge for Milan would come two years later, as Milan would get to their 10th Champions League final facing Liverpool again. But this time, nothing would take the trophy away and they dispatched Liverpool 2-0, with Seedorf winning his fourth Champions League trophy. It was magical. Seedorf won his second Serie A in 2011 before announcing his departure at the end of the following season. He left AC Milan and left his dear friend also, the Champions League. He left for Botafogo in Brazil and in January 2014, he announced his retirement to become coach of AC Milan. He was definitely one of the most decorated players of his generation and one of the most underrated. Yes, thank you very much for watching. We've come to the end of this video. I know you didn't want it to end. Me too. You know what? If you want more videos like this, hit that subscribe button, sit back and watch your questions about football get answered. Oh yes, and turn on notifications too. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy yourselves and goodbye.